From Washington, this is VOA News. The U.S. president urges a response to Egyptian protesters. A new family law in China brings controversy. I'm Dave DeForest reporting from Washington. U.S. President Barack Obama is urging Egyptian leader Mohamed Morsi to show he is responsive to the concerns of opposition protesters. Egypt has seen several days of demonstrations with many of those opposed to Mr. Morsi calling for him to resign. Violence has broken out in some areas. The White House said Mr. Obama expressed his concerns to Mr. Morsi in a telephone call Monday saying that the United States backs a democratic process in Egypt. Mr. Obama also said he was concerned about the violence, particularly sexual assaults against women. For more on this story, visit our website, voanews.com. A Russian official says fugitive American Edward Snowden has dropped his bid for asylum, after President Vladimir Putin said he could only stay if he stopped leaking sensitive U.S. intelligence. The spokesman for Mr. Putin also confirmed that Snowden remains in the transit zone of a Moscow airport where he fled eight days ago from Hong Kong after revealing top-secret U.S. surveillance operations. WikiLeaks, the anti-secrecy group that has supported Snowden, says it has submitted asylum requests to 19 countries on behalf of the ex-CIA employee. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry says planned peace talks for Syria may now be delayed until after August. He met with Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov today about the conflict. Scott Stearns reports. Kerry says Russia and the United States have the most significant difference on the question of Syria, but both are more than serious, committed to the process of getting the two sides in that country to talks on a transitional government. Our countries have an ability to be able to make a difference if we can pull uh, together in that effort. Russia is supplying arms to forces loyal to Syrian President Bashar al-Assad the United States says it's now ready to arm the rebellion against him. But Kerry says he and Lavrov are still pushing for those transitional government talks, narrowing some of the differences over a conference that Kerry says may be pushed back until after August. Scott Stearns, VOA News, Brunei. North Korea says it is still open to direct talks with the United States, but will not give up its nuclear program unless the U.S. changes its, quote, hostile tone and ends sanctions against it. Speaking today at the ASEAN Regional Forum in Brunei, North Korean Foreign Ministry spokesman Cho Myung-nam said the U.S. is to blame for the recent tensions on the Korean Peninsula. The U.S. says the North must first show it is willing to give up its nuclear weapons. Six-party talks aimed at nuclear disarmament have been stalled since 2008. U.S. President Barack Obama has finished a trip to Africa and says he is convinced that with the right approach, Africans can achieve a new era of prosperity. Mr. Obama has highlighted programs that combine public and private efforts to spur economic progress. Officials from India and Pakistan say there is political will on both sides to improve the often contentious relationship between the two countries. Aru Pandey has more. On Tuesday, Indian Foreign Minister Salman Khurshid met briefly with Prime Minister Sharif's special advisor on foreign affairs and said there's political will to take ties between India and Pakistan further. He told reporters in Brunei that New Delhi is already working in that direction. And we will respond with, uh, within our capacity uh, to the maximum extent. Even before his election in May, Pakistani Prime Minister Sharif had called for building greater ties between Islamabad and New Delhi. His foreign affairs adviser Aziz on Tuesday reaffirmed that sentiment following his 20-minute meeting with Khurshid. 
Arupan Day, New Delhi. A new law in China threatens to punish adult children who do not regularly visit their parents. The law that went into force Monday requires family members to often visit relatives over 60 years of age, in addition to caring for their psychological needs. It does not specify how often the visits must take place and does not say what punishment will be given to those who break the law. Afghan police say an insurgent attack in Kabul has killed at least six people and wounded four. The attack targeted a logistics firm that works with international forces. The Taliban claimed responsibility. The dead include four Nepalese guards and two civilians. I'm Dave DeForest. More news on the Internet at voanews.com.